Hello all. Um, I thought I would be stopping with videos on parapsychology except to help critique arguments for skeptics, but uh, another source came to my attention which uh, I felt needed some comments. Um, a fellow skeptic um, who's somewhere in the uh, open-minded stage about, paras about psychic phenomena, kind of like I am, um, uh, brought me attention to this video which I'm listing here about an interview with Dean Radin. Um, I watched the full thing through, and um, I'd have to say that it was not too bad However, I do think there are a couple of things which strongly need some comment, um, particularly to clarify a couple of things that Raiden might have said and he may not be aware of in his relation to um, critique. Um, to be precise, when it came to when he said 60 or 70 percent of scientists believe uh, that he, or are interested in ESP, um, if you go to skeptics, if you go to Skeptics Dictionary at skeptic.com and you look up stats on scientists who believe, a survey taken a couple of years ago showed roughly half of hard scientists, physicists, chemists, that sort of thing, uh, were strongly interested in that sort of thing or believed that it might exist. Uh, interestingly, it was the field of psychology that was actually uh, the strongest against ESP, with only seven percent of psychologists believing that it's a possibility. Um, another interesting factor, um, when he talks about, uh, about the higher correlation of people who are technical and believe in it, um, a prominent example, I don't think that this is a proof that this thing exists. Note that I am well aware of the ad populum fallacy. But I do think it interesting to note that David Bohm, a prominent uh, student of Einstein's, um, did say that the current laws of physics do not preclude, like do not dismiss, in, uh, do not um, they do not contradict the existence of ESP. They, uh, they allow for a possibility, but they just sim it's just there's been no hard evidence for it. Um, now, uh, I'd also should probably comment on the uh, stupidity theory that he uh, quoted about you know lack of scientific education or lack of uh, you know lack of um, you know people being easily able to be delusional or stuff like that in relation to ESP. There are actually two formats of that particular experiment. Uh, of that particular theory, one of which pertains to the general public, but the other one of which pertains to scientists. This is one that has been quoted often by Randy, and um, you know that the idea that uh, that because of the fact that uh, a lot of it should be magic tricks, and uh, that therefore scientists, because of the fact that they don't believe they're easily duped, are actually more easily able to be duped than the average person. That may be true. However, um, in relation to, um, I would recommend, before uh, going on about this, to go read the Wikipedia article on the Alpha Project. The fact was that even, um, you know, regardless of whether or not you take Thalburn's uh, account in, or you take, a, um, go look up Michael Prescott's, uh, Michael Prescott, uh, P-R-E-S-C-O-T-T, -T, comma, Project Alpha. Take a look at his blog, and take a look at the sources he quotes. But those not being counted aside, even if you disregard those, Publicly, it is known record that the Banachek and his partner did violate Randy's caveat uh, in the fact that they tried to get rid of a, um, or succeeded in getting rid of, a cameraman who was fairly competent in catching them at faking spoon bending. And technically, by Randy's caveats, if the controls were good enough, that should have been considered as a failure. So, it is possible that there are some studies out there which are well controlled. Hence my, uh, uh, my demand for further research. Now, this gets me to the topic of, Ran, uh, of Dean Radin's work initially. Uh, this is my reply to Mindfreak, who uh, asked me what I thought of Dean Radin's work um, and when he presented me this data for this video, uh, when he presented me this video clip. Um, the argument that Radin presents does seem to be critically thinking. However, I still think that further research is needed. As he pointed out, uh, there is, we don't use the word proof in science. And um, we don't use the, pr the word proof in science. And, uh, and he said, you know, that... He basically said, like, you know, why is, he said this is one of the largest areas where no further research is done. Um, one of the ones he keeps talking about is mind-matter interaction. Um, and, for example, he, uh, in other videos, particularly in What the Bleep Do We Know, he's talked about the Global Consciousness Project. Well, I've seen some critique of that by fellow skeptics who have said that there were instances w of data which um, didn't, which, uh, of significant data, which weren't correlated to world events and didn't fit the, uh, his theories, uh, Raiden's theories. My answer to that? Good. Why not a group of skeptics who are seriously minded about this set up a field of their own random number generators and just simply not pay attention to, um, you know, regardless of world events, look at, you know, the same data coming in with world events, but also take the time to take a look at all the data and find out if there are other, um, you know, or if there are other areas of significant data which don't fit the, the, uh, the theory. Retake a look at the other data and, and falsify the theory that way. Let's look under replications. This is what the this is what science is made of. 
So um, again, I strongly suggest that. Um, and once again, um, there is one other thing. I want to run back to another part of the argument. Um, when scientists say that the bulk of it is, um, you know, just magic tricks or what have you, I said in another video of mine, the skeptic police, uh, I quoted, I'd use a false cigarette to show that uh, I wasn't really smoking a cigarette. Penn and Teller um, do a clip, did a clip on Just for Laughs, where they demonstrated the seven principles of magic by having Teller light a cigarette, drop it on the ground, and then all of a sudden drop, pull another cigarette out of, uh, from behind his ear and light it again. And this was an illusion. But the point is that just because this was an illusion does not mean that all lighting of cigarettes or drop, you know, or getting rid of cigarettes and relighting a fresh one are illusion either. My point being is that that epistemological argument is unsound. Yes, it is a good way to be aware of skept of uh, of how frauds work. It's a good, it's a really great way to make people aware of how most mediums, professional psychics, what have you, work, and to be aware to test them uh, to see if their claims are accurate. However, as an epistemological argument, it is not sound, um, or not entirely sound. Um, it may account for majority, but it does not account for all, which is why replication and more study is needed. Anyway. Uh, that being aside, um, I would like to critique on some other work. Um, Raiden's work with the Global Consciousness Project, I do think does have some flaws in it, could bear uh, work uh, by somebody else attempting to replicate it. His work on presentiment has been replicated by uh, Dick J. Bierman and apparently a few other institutions in the U.S. So I would, again, strongly consider further research on that. Dean Raiden's work on quantum entanglement of the minds uh, could be basis for telepathy. Um, Howard Eisenberg uh, did a study, um, I have it in my jacket, called uh, Telepathic uh, Transfer of Emotional Information in Humans. Um, that compared with the uh, Gansfield projects, which I haven't, I agree with Ray Hyman, fellow mega skeptic, who said meta analyses should formulate new hypotheses which should be tested in replications by other institutions, by other, um, by other uh, scientific groups. So far, I haven't heard of any other independent replication attempts with the Gansfield project. Again, um, Thelma Moss's work was replicated by Howard Eisenberg, which could be considered replicated by the Gansfield, but should be attempted to be replicated by skeptics while keeping out the, uh, the, uh, um, the idea of allowing the skeptics to communicate their idea of expecting null results even through subtle body language to subjects. Control for psychological variables, uh, more so. Um, test it by computer. Um, you know, let's get as strict your protocols on both sides as we can, and let's encourage more and more replication. As we're getting results, let's not just poke flaws in here. Um, to quote Michael Shermer uh, on a final point here, he said that, there, that all ideas are initially wacky until you know time passes and more evidence comes in, and then of course you know uh, when the idea is widely accepted, it becomes conservative, and eventually somebody wins the Nobel Prize. Well, to quote Michael Shermer, and I pray to God I'm not quoting him out of context here. Um, last month's issue of Scientific American, when he was talking about um, popular reporting of science and stuff like that, he said in the end, weirdness trumps data. Well. If that's the case, let's continue. Uh, let's continue replication studies. If there is a um, if there is a uh, phenomena there, and if it's weird enough, it will trump the data. And if enough data does present itself um, on both sides, that you know that there is something seriously there to be looked at, we may have something to we may have something to find. You know, um, it may not be a hundred percent. Maybe in a natural phenomena, psychic phenomena, maybe only can get forty percent of the time. I mean, the anyway. Um, I would recommend looking at this Raiden's video. I'm going to tack it onto the list of sources I've already presented on both sides of the issue. Um, read that in relation to experiment, uh, experimental uh, experimenter psi effect, final data, and addendum. Um, read that bibliography. Read this as one more source on the bibliography. Make up your own minds. Take a look at the critical thinking stuff I presented as well. Bottom line is here, just because you hold a belief does not necessarily mean you're a critical thinker. I'm still open-minded and want further evidence one way or another on this issue. I encourage everyone else to do the same. Let's stick to replications, shall we?